So I might as well start off with uh, with the sheriff, uh, Roger, um, uh, to report to us. Okay, well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And um, I'm sorry, I am, I'm sorry, or you may be happy to see that I'm not on a screen somewhere. <laughs> Um, so we're dealing with a lot of, uh, Carol, I assume if I understood you, that you'd like me just to give a short briefing? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're dealing with a, a lot of different, uh, issues here. Uh, of course, with this particular sheriff's department, we, we have the, uh, uh, you know, we're involved with the homeless. And, uh, so right now, uh, I don't know if anybody else is going to cover that. But I'll, I'll just uh, say that uh, we're going to uh, we're working with the state, and there's there's a possibility that they, these folks in Hyde Park Village will be uh, relocated to a hotel uh, room, and there's, there'll be more to follow on that later on. Uh, we are completely uh, operational. The uh, uh, Hyde Park, of course, is is one of the three primary law enforcement towns that we have the responsibility for. Uh, we're trying to keep our deputies safe by any interactions uh, that can be done over the phone. Uh, we're going to handle it that way. And, and my, my deputies are right now uh, at the scene of this rollover accident. And that necessitates us to get up close and personal with people, uh, you know, when we're trying to help them uh, along with EMS and, and the fire department. Uh, we have gotten our first small shipment of N95 uh, um, masks that are part of our personal protection equipment. And uh, um, we've got several uh, requests in um, through the, the appropriate channels for personal protective equipment. We went down and purchased a bunch of eyeglasses because the masks aren't any good without the uh, safety glasses, the wraparound safety glasses and the gloves. So we're working on protocols, which are we're, we're fairly new, uh, that are, are new to us, and and we'll try to figure out, uh, uh, you know, if if deputies are involved with someone that we become aware that they have the virus, then we have to change our clothes so that we don't bring that back to the office or, or back to our our families. So. Uh, Dispatch uh, is a critical infrastructure uh, because of the E911 call taking, and we are uh, uh, we've limited access to dispatch. Even other police officers from other towns are uh, are asked to stay out of our dispatch, so that we can try to keep those folks healthy. Uh, and um, so, uh, and I'm the chair of the E911 board, so I. I participate every Friday on a conference call where we're trying to keep all of our six dispatches up and running uh, so that we can keep those critical uh, calls uh, coming in and, and addressed. Uh, other than that, uh, we've had to quarantine, I think uh, at different occasions, we've quarantined uh, three different employees and, uh, uh, and one of them is already back to work because they've gone through the 14-day uh, 14, 14 period but we're not taking any chances there. So business as usual, if you need us, call us. And I guess that's about what I have, Carol. Well, thank you, Roger. Um, how's your, your glove situation? Um, do you have enough there? Well, being a resourceful fellow, I went to the Napa store and bought a bunch of automotive rubber gloves, which are pretty pretty robust. So I think we're in good shape. We couldn't find as many extra large gloves as, as we would have liked, but uh, 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 we have enough. When we bought them in bulk, where deputies are just asked to take a handful and put them in your equipment, your pockets, or whatever, and make sure that when you get to a scene, you get out, you know, with this stuff on you. Uh, there was a sheriff in Orleans County who backed up her deputy yesterday and they had to, uh, um, they had a kind of a, 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 an active situation. And that person had just arrived from, or had just, uh, uh, had just left the uh, hospital emergency room up there. And then when the, uh, so the sheriff herself was dealing with this person, didn't have the, the protective equipment on. And, and so sometimes 
you don't have time to put that stuff on in a real active scene. So now that's kind of making us, uh, uh, you know, we're putting a directive out that, hey, ladies and gentlemen, you have to have this equipment on you. Uh, and don't don't anticipate you're going to have extra time to do it. But uh, we we've got enough equipment for right now, I think. So great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Angie. Yeah. Hi. Um, I would like to um, let Karen Weeks go ahead and speak to our our group. But thank you for including us on this call. She's going to give you our details. Okay. Karen. Welcome. Hi, I put my video on. Um, thanks for inviting us. Uh, Melanie uh, Carpenter and Angie Parasi and I have been working hard to create what we hope is a need um, to just to be able to go shopping for people um, for essential items, pick up their mail if needed, and also um, prescriptions. Um, and we've, we've got um, 43 initial volunteers and um, which was amazing and then we've we've put out a, a second form to those 43 people which includes like a release of liability and out of those we've received 14 have returned their release of, release of liability form um, and I expect more to come in like tonight and um, tomorrow so we've got people that are very interested and we've got protocols and procedures um, in place um, to, you know, for the shoppers to be safe. And, um, and initially, uh, you know, we have protocols and procedures in place for dropping off the groceries. Um, but uh, uh, Sheriff Marcou has dedicated um, time with um, Deputy Eric Dodge to coordinate with us and other towns for this type of service that they would actually be willing to be the ones to do the drop-off delivery of the food um, at the residents' homes. And so um, uh, that is sort of a second, a new new part of the plan um, is that we would work with the sheriff's department for the food, the grocery or delivery of whatever the items are so that there's less people interacting with, with folks. Um, we um, have already done one with uh, Paul Nesky's help at Sterling View, um, and we've had a request for a second one today that we're just getting started working on. Um, and we've also had a request to help with the delivery of um, the meals from the Charlemont to the um, the shelter house in Hyde Park um, because the Charlemont is doing meals three times a day. Um, and so we're sort of working on that right now. Um, I have a message in with Eric Dodge about that and whether or not the sheriff's deputies that they have available would be work would be would do that or if or if we could. I feel like we really could do it. Um, we've got the, the people because people really want to do something. So um but you know, obviously, do it the most safest way as possible. And then there's some people that have talked about other things that they could do for people. They could walk their pets, or they could do this or that. We've had questions from other towns, um, but we're really trying to stick to Hyde Park, and that we'd be happy to help others um, help create something like this for other towns. We were on an hour-long call this morning with. Um, folks uh, from all around the state who have this type of thing um, going um, in towns and cities, um, but they also have much more. And, and I think that that's where, you know, we haven't talked to you, Carol or Brad, who I know isn't on here, but, you know, they've, they've got some really robust um, samples. We've got links to all of their information and um, the way they, they've set up things. Um, one thought before um, any questions, um, Crass really created a really nice little postcard that just got sent out to um, a direct delivery postcard um, that went to every um, every door um, that just said, hey, here's the information, here's how you can get 
get this type of help if you if you'd like it. Um, and uh, we were just wondering if there might be a way that the town might consider uh, a postcard. We could we could design it based upon what Crossbury did. Um, that was a thought just to keep getting the word out. We have a lot of people interested in helping, but um, not too many people calling yet. And I, you know, I think it's going to pick up and it, it feels like in the last two days, it's going to pick up. I think once the schools, the length of time seeming to be long, longer with the school decision, um, it's changed people's thinking. So I don't know if I forgot anything, Angie or Melanie. No, I think that was great. Um, yeah, just wanting people's feedback about the thought of doing an every door direct mailing, if that was something the town wanted to do to get the word out, if they thought that was needed. Um, I can let uh, Ron speak to that, um, or um, we could take that um, offline, Ron. Yes, I think that's any of those mechanical things about how to put notice out or best ways we can always take offline. But yeah, if there's a service, local service, not everybody gets those things. We found that out with a couple meetings that we were having for other topics where somebody simply didn't get the newspaper, preferred not to read the newspaper, wasn't connected to internet, et cetera, and they really needed the mail contact. So yes, we can figure that out, but let's uh, talk offline. The other Roger. I'll draw that. Yes. Um, I was like, boy, I'm just listening in, see what's going on. Okay. I haven't, haven't anybody come to me about anything yet. Okay. Uh, Brent, what do you have for us? Uh, everything's about the same up here. Nothing's changed. John did get through, I guess, to the state today to get the suits and masks and gloves i guess they've found some somewhere so he said he's got an order in for that we have gone ahead we've washed uh ordered our washing machine hopefully that thing will make it here if they don't shut down the trucking um but other than that we're still not using the fire hills unless there's calls or uh paperwork that we have to get done so it's very limited traffic in and out Good. So how many uh, uh, sets of gear can you wash at once with this new order? Uh, it'll, new be, order? it'll be able to do four. Nice. We've got a little bit of work to get it in there. I'm waiting on the drain for it. But once the drain gets here, we can jack here with the floor up and get that tied in. But we're just waiting to see when they think they're going to be able to ship it. Because I guess every hospital in the U.S. has just ordered them. <laughs> yeah. Like it seems people have ordered freezers as well. Yeah, but no, business is the same as always. We went to a chimney fire Hyde park the other day. Everything seemed to be fine. Just doing it what we got to and staying out of the fire homes. Good. Thank you. Um, Mark? We are still trying to keep the guys separated, responding to any emergencies in town. We've been out grading. We've been hauling gravel. We're... We're still out there trying to provide that service we can by keeping everybody separate, but we're still plugging along. Okay, thank you. Um, Roland. Yes, Roland Mobine, Slug Board. I don't have nothing. Nobody has got a hold of me, and um, everything seems to be fine on my end here. Okay, thank you. Um, Carol. Hello. Uh, all is well with us. Kenny, we've got a couple of illnesses, but they're not COVID related. And we're just taking care of business separate from each other. Okay, thank you. Kelly? Um, nothing has changed for me. I am officially set up at home, working from home with limited um, office visit not needed as possible. Okay. Paul. Hi. Paul Nesky here from Sterling View. Um, last week I, uh, I told you that we had um, we'd put in place a committee to be proactive and focus on health and wellness in, in the park here. 
So towards that end, the committee has been gathering uh, some information among themselves and meeting uh, as best they can, um, which is getting harder e each day, you know, uh, staying apart and not. Uh, so as of yesterday, um, that was the last time we would even meet uh, six to 10 feet apart. It was everything now will be online by phone. So what they've come up with, uh, uh, first, I just want to paraphrase for anybody that wasn't aware of who the committee people are. They're all professional Med former medical and some medical professionals of one variety or another, whether nurses or lab technicians and the like, um, and been, some been, have been in this uh, profession for 30, 40 years, um, most of them in retirement. So what they've done now is, is made a, a emergency medical information form for residents here in the park. We don't know each other from that perspective, all of us of the 113 households that are here, I might know my neighbors and a few other people what their health issues are, but we really need to know if we're gonna be of assistance to them in an emergency situation. So to assist the EMS in the case of emergency uh, medical issues, we've got a form that we're, we're helping them fill out. And on there, the typical issues, like who's your doctor and the doctor's phone, your allergies, and medications, um, if you have any conditions that uh, aren't really known to us on the outside, and, it's, and it gets, we get serious with the questions, that's why the people that make up our committee are of the medical field. So they, you know, it's not going to be people like me going around knocking on door inquiring of these things. So it'll be, you'll have a, once they introduce themselves, um, you'll know because I'm sending out a, um, our monthly newsletter will be leaving uh, for the month of, April and uh, here in another three days in there will be information regarding these uh, technicians that are have formed the nucleus of this uh, um, group for the health and wellness committee so included in, in the questions we'll we'll know if there are pacemakers defibs in the household um, if not we're looking forward to getting the one that Brad said that, that perhaps we'd be a, we'd be able to obtain uh, when it, when the order is fulfilled uh, this summer. Uh, the other thing is prescriptions and over-the-counter medications that they're currently taking. In in the packet that we're going to leave with the, the homeowners or the, the residents will be uh, the usual uh, Red Cross uh, notice you used to see on your on the refrigerator, you know, the little red folder that would have your, your medications in it. Well, we're doing it with, with um, prescription bottles and they're the large, almost pint-sized, and on there, it says emergency medical information, and we tell them to put it on the top shelf on the right-hand side of the refrigerator. So that information will be given to the emergency <clears throat> medical folks who would arrive on the scene. We'll let them know in advance here in the next few days of, of that uh, program that we're implementing. So that's one of the things that we're doing in a proactive sense. The, the other is also... Um, Want to know how many people are living in the household. We really truly don't always know uh, and uh, Who is there and if they have lifeline if they have a, a generator that's uh, able to, to turn on automatically uh, If they're especially if they have issues with um, You know our oxygen uh, and the needs thereof um, we, we would like to know that the last thing we're putting on and as conditions have changed during the process of uh, working through this um, informational pack that we're doing, <laughs> we're, we're imploring them to stay home, stay focused on your spacing and washing, washing your hands, keeping clean of that in that manner. Um, we've got our park in a semi quarantine position. Now the, the clubhouse has been put, put to lockdown now for, for now two and a half weeks. The, um, the third issue that we're working with, uh, is an of great concern to us here are the people that are coming in from out of the country returning for the the next six month period of time and we've got quite a number of them uh, that are uh, in the United States and a couple of them that are out of the country some that were out of the country are here they're in self quarantine now and we we've made personal visits or phone calls to them to let them know that we're aware that they're here and glad you're here but stay home if you need anything, the first thing we're telling them is to utilize the High Park Helpers program that's been that's in place. We've 
on the bulletin board at the clubhouse where the mail room is, is uh, a notification that uh, the folks at the High Park Helpers have made and we posted it and it's a rip off tags with their phone numbers on it. And I noticed just this morning when I was there that half of those are, are missing. So people have been tearing them off and um, we've been in our information packet, we've purposely put there in the forefront, uh, again, their phone number uh, on the information uh, the pages that we've given them. Um, that's the beginning of what we're planning on implementing over time. Um, one of the things I keep telling our people when we've met is that you know, <laughs> what we spoke about yesterday and what we planned on doing or thinking about and writing and telling our people changed. We In the very beginning, we had a, a packet of CDC information and from the Vermont Health Department and we were copying stuff rapidly off the internet and this, <laughs> we had a stack of papers we were gonna hand out, you know, five, six pages of stuff. In the end, it came down to just those three things that I mentioned earlier, you know, to uh, stay home, stay, wash your groupings, your, your distance, and, and wash your hands. Uh, and I think if we, if our people can do that, we'll keep them safer than, than if they otherwise didn't have that information embedded, embedded in their persona and their, their lifestyle, which you know is, is, is changing on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're looking forward to working we have with uh, the High Park helpers, uh, with the one uh, uh, resident here where we we did some uh, grocery shopping for him. Uh, Everything worked fine until the until he was <laughs> when the groceries got to the door. Uh, he insisted they come in, I guess, and, he, and that wasn't the plan. Uh, the plan was to stay away, to leave it on the porch. Uh, but that's uh, being worked out now, thankfully, with uh, the assistance of Roger Marcoux and his uh, right hand man there, Eric Dodge. So we're very thankful that that uh, that that's that's being done and, and it's going to be done in a safer manner especially for those volunteers that are dedicating, you know, themselves to, the, to, to us here in the park. I really, really am thankful that they're there. Um, so I look forward to continuing in a manner such as this, working together. This is the great science of just a little community, and, uh, and I'm, I'm very thankful that I live here. So that's it for me. Thank you. This is, this is Valerie, sorry. I, I, Valerie's office from the health department. Sorry, I came on a little bit late. Um, and I didn't catch your name who just spoke, but um, through the health department and the medical reserve corps, I'm very interested in all the things that you just said and how we can be of assistance to you. Um, and I'm also um, curious if you are familiar with the, the um, like it's a uh, reverse E911 system, the care program through the state. Um, I may not be as familiar as I should be, I'd be happy to to meet with you at some point, um, either perhaps remotely or <laughs> six feet apart, or something. But um, we can right. certainly speak on the phone. Um, my, um, um, I I'll give you my my cell phone number. Um, okay. Or actually, we can t we can we can uh, talk offline or um, um, just call the the Morrisville Health Department um, eight 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 seven four four seven and we'll. Somehow we'll get in touch. But what's your name again? I'm sorry. Paul Nesky. Okay. Yeah, I've heard your name before. Okay. Okay. Well, thank we'll, you. We'll Paul. talk. I don't. I don't want to hold up your your call. Sorry. Yes, thank you, Paul. That sounded uh, excellent. Um, Carol. Uh, yes. This is Mark from Highway. Is uh, Roger Marcus still on? Roger, are you still um, still on? Yeah, I had to find my mute button here, but yes, I am. Roger, we have a, a pretty good surplus of rubber extra large gloves at our shop. We bought on sale a while ago. So if you get in a dire need, come over to Hyde Park Highway. We could probably work with you. And, and that's extra large? Yes. I, I think I've oh. got many of cases of them. Or many oh. boxes. I've got quite a few cases on sale to get us through. So I think I have quite a few. If you do get in dire needs, let me know, and we could probably hook you up. Okay, I appreciate that very much, Mark. I'll uh, hook up with you first of the week. Okay, sounds good.
And uh, one, one other suggestion about uh, gloves and, and PPE, um, Harbor Freight Tools um, had offered, uh, it was primarily, I believe, for hospitals, but they were donating um, their entire stock of gloves and other PPE to hospitals and, and that. And there uh, was an email that um, you could respond to with uh, the request. And uh, if you'd like that, I can, uh, I can forward that um, later on. Perfect. Uh, appreciate it. Okay, I'll, I'll pass that on. Um, let's see. Uh, Keith, you're next. Hi, uh, this is Keith Ulrich, uh, health officer. Um, nothing, I, I don't have anything to uh, report. I'm just listening and uh, nothing. Uh, I've, I've had no calls regarding uh, COVID-19. Okay, thank you, Keith. And um, I, I believe you may have talked to Ron, and um, we should uh, um, talk as well. Um, and Val, I believe you are the last one. Oh, yep. So <laughs> trying to do two conference calls at the same time here. I'm having a challenge. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, I don't really have much to report other than I don't know if folks have looked at the website. Um, the, the, the health department, health.gov, um, COVID-19 website, uh, you'll see in Lamoille County, we, there are currently six um, people who have tested positive. There are 184 that have tested positive in the state. Um, and uh, part of the reason why those numbers are going up is that the, the ability to test has increased. Um, and uh, um, I can say from an earlier call today that um, a lot of these folks are at home. They're, they're sheltering at home. Um, and yeah. The, the, the state is calling all these folks and tracing all these folks, so um, we're doing everything to get the message out. And uh, uh, yeah, I think that's really all I have to say at this moment, but um, if there's any questions, let me know. Thanks, Val. Um, I must say, I, I don't know if uh, you or the health department um, had any involvement in the uh, charts that were in the EMD uh, daily update um, with a uh, logarithmic plot of the number of cases, um, but I found that very, very helpful. It had Vermont, um, the national, and all the individual states, and I found the information quite useful, and uh, hopefully that will, will continue. Uh, does anybody else have any questions for Val? Okay, then. Um, uh, Amy would would uh, uh, why don't you go ahead, Amy? This is Roger. Could I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. Val, how many in uh, Lamoille County that you're aware of? No, Roger, you're, you're. Are you talking about the confirmed cases in Lamoille? Yeah, it was a question for Val. Oh, I just looked at the map. It shows six right now for Lamoille County. Oh, okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, uh, Amy, um, why don't you go ahead? Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I just wanted to say that the Landfair Memorial Library is completely closed now. We are, uh, on Wednesday was our last day of offering what we were calling curbside service, where people could call ahead or reserve online and we would get the materials ready for them to check out. Um, we tried to pack up as much as we could for people and are, also asking folks not to return books until after May 1st, just because the American Library Association has issued um, today, I believe, um, information on how to clean books and maintain the collection. And, and there's no real good way to do that. So in order to try to keep our collection as safe as possible, as well as the building and the people inside and outside, um, we're, we're no longer letting any materials leave or enter the building at this time. 
Um, we are worried and about people who are isolated without, we know that library books are a lifeline for a lot of people. And so commending Hyde Park helpers really for the work that they're doing and uh, the work that Paul Nesky is doing at Sterling View. Um, we plan on calling some of those people that we know who are sort of alone out there and recommending Hyde Park helpers for um, some of those needs. And also have put some of our collection development money toward buying more audio and eBooks. Um, we have belonged to a consortium service throughout the whole state. So this um, downloadable audio and ebook service is incredibly popular right now, as you can imagine. And so there are a lot of holds and weights on those books. As a consortium, we voted to put more money in for everybody um, to buy more books now for audio and ebooks. But um, as an individual library, we decided to buy some ourselves so that um, just our library patrons would have access to some of those materials and not have to um, to add their names to a long wait. And I think that's, oh, um, I will be putting in some hours in the library building, but I will be the only person here. So um, that's the update on the library. Great, thank you, Amy. Um, I believe that should be everybody except for Ron. Uh, Ron wanted to uh, report in last. So why don't you go ahead, Ron? Uh, hello, yes. Thank you, everybody, for participating. We're uh, trying to keep these up on a weekly basis just to check in and, and keep things moving as best we can with everybody hearing the same stuff at the same time. We did get an update from the state uh, EOC and the White House and everybody else. It seems like there's probably a half a dozen different phone conferences or updates going on so it's all a little blurry but for town operations in particular uh, there should be some local federal aid coming down uh, at some point so all departments should be tracking anything covid related especially if you're buying things uh, people going home on leave can code that to the covid um, uh, pay type, those kind of things. So we keep track of uh, people doing regular work versus COVID time off or COVID um, extra work, so to speak. So as, as long as you're aware of that, you can talk to Allison about how to keep track of those things. I'm pretty sure at some point somebody's going to say, what did it cost you? Um, other places are more costly than maybe Hyde Park, but we still have to keep track of it. There's some new unemployment information that came out today, which we're reviewing. So that hopefully on Monday select board meeting, which will be another phone conference at uh, 3.30. Uh, we'll have more information on employment and what to do. Um, thinking of library staff that's not working anymore, for example. Um, as far as uh, information sharing, we're, we've moved to a, a new website page, which you can link to right from the home page which is an emergency management page, and we've moved all the information on COVID there. Uh, so that's sort of a good central local database. We're gonna be uploading some other local local information, such as store hours, um, who's, who's available for services, Hyde Park helpers will eventually get posted there. So people that uh, do need something for information sharing, if you want to send it to me, uh, we can add it to that website so if everybody can take a look at that and see if it's helpful useful or if you want more information that would be good to hear back on uh, so once again we have the select board meeting on monday at 3 30. they may make additional decisions about town facilities right now we don't have a select board determination on uh, things like the rec fields up in garfield or the grange hall um, i'm guessing that uh, it's, it seems like it's headed towards closure of all public buildings and facilities. Uh, obviously, that means no organized things, but probably allowing more passive things. So if somebody, even though it's a closed facility, if there's a couple of individuals that wanted to walk across the ball fields, that'd be fine. But probably not having softball events and those kind of things. So other than that, please continue to share information. Looks like some great things are moving on and we'll continue to talk on a weekly basis and until we don't need to anymore. Great, thank you, Ron. Um, 
I think that about does it. Um, I do have uh, some uh, some questions for um, for the Hyde Park helpers, but I think I can take that uh, offline and uh, talk with you then. Um, I think I've got. Uh, I may have your email at. Well, I do have your email address as I invited you. So um, I will email you and and we can chat offline. So uh, with that, uh, does anybody have any questions or um, uh, anybody want to add anything? And uh, other than that, we will uh, we'll close this week's meeting. Can I just um, ask Paul Nesky a quick question? Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, Paul, are you still on? I'm yes, I am. Who's this? It's Karen Weeks. Um, Peggy okay. Walker had gotten in touch. With me. Um, Peggy had gotten in touch with me earlier this week, and I can't find her contact information. So if she can get back in touch with me, then I'll have it. Um, I'd be, if you're able to tell her that. I am. I, I have her information, but I'll I'll, I'll give her yours, and just, she can contact you again. Okay. Either way. Thanks, Paul. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Karen. Well, thank you, Carol. I'll sign off and uh, thank you, everybody, for, for coming. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, looks like people are signing out. So um, we will talk to you next week. Um, and actually, um, Karen, if you're if you're uh, looks like you're still on here, I can ask a couple things while you're while you're still here. Have a good weekend. You too. Yep. Uh, that'd be great. I think Angie's still here, and I can't I'm tell if Melanie too. is. Yeah, I'm still. Oh, on. great. Yep. I just said unmute. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> and, and Ron's here as well, so that's perfect. Um, I was curious whether whether you or any of the Hyde Park helpers had any um, um, volunteer disaster experience with uh, a CERT team or, or, or Red Cross or anything like that. Um, I'm Angie, and I don't have any, um, but I'm an educator uh, teacher, so we've all been trained in ALICE, and um, I've always been on the emergency team in my school building to coordinate all of the lockdowns. Okay, this great. Melanie, I have not had any of that training um, that you named, but I used to be a principal at, in Stowe, and we had certain training there for just, like, security of the building and lockdown drills, but nothing formally, like, from the Red Cross and whatnot. Okay. Um, is, uh, and, actually, and I, just, go ahead. Oh, I'm Karen, and I I haven't had any emergency training in terms of like town pandemics or anything like that. But I too was a school principal and um, in Morrisville. So. Okay. Um, I I was asking. Um, I actually didn't realize this until uh, very recently that uh, FEMA had stopped supporting the CERT teams. Uh, that's a community emergency response team. And um, and those are going to have to um, essentially form um, uh, 501c3s and, and uh, kind of organize themselves. Um, and it seems to me that um, this might be something that would be good to um, keep going even after even after this um, event is done uh, to keep this group going. And uh, there's a, there's quite a bit of training on uh, on FEMA's uh, website about volunteering, incident command system, all those sorts of things. Um, something that uh, you know we could look at uh, later on. Um, Ron. Sorry, I was dealing with some uh, emails and text messages that came in. So, re, re ask your question, please. I, I, I was I was talking to them about um, about the the CERT teams that FEMA is no longer uh, supporting, and they had suggested that uh, they form 501c3s. And I thought, 
um, something like Hyde Park Helpers would be good to continue beyond uh, beyond this event so that when the next event happens that we have um, a, a, a team already that's trained and organized and knows just what to do and, and all yeah. the things that they need to do. Yeah, no, I had the same thought during their presentation that uh, we always, and, and actually if you look back at select board minutes probably six or seven months ago, the select board was uh, trying to figure out how to fund a uh, effort for neighborhood, um, uh, what they call it, neighborhood assistance or something like that, so that the town would actually provide funding because we had gotten a request on a health and safety, um, actually a couple kind of hit, hit at the same time, it must have been last summer, uh, where neighborhoods were having trouble with health and safety issues regarding trash or uh, uh, zombie houses, if you're familiar with that term, uh, mm -hmm. abandoned houses, uh, health risks with Keith, you know, Keith would have to work on it as health officer. And then the neighbors really didn't have anywhere to turn because it's a private property issue and sometimes the banks are managing it, but they're managing it from California. So it was having a negative impact on the neighborhood. And the municipality has a little bit more pull than the neighborhood would to sort of facilitate a change. So out of that discussion, we came up with a sort of an outline of how uh, community groups, whether they're neighborhoods or something like High Park, High Park Helpers would actually get to a point of a funding issue and whether or not the, the town would be a resource for funding the activities. And in my example, it was a purely a cleanup type fund, but we also, obviously have a need now by you know need by disaster whether it's temporary housing the you know, red cross type services um some of the regional agencies state in agencies are kind of banding together too so i don't know what's going to come as an outcome for that but i think the 501c3 is the sustaining type of structure but it also might be depending on how this event folds out it might be a, a regional or statewide network as well which would provide the structure for those things so probably a little early to to do anything more than what we're trying to do on this in emergency basis but i know there's town support for engaging with something that's pretty local and then the uh, regional and state uh, organizations would provide some good structure for a, sort of like franchise operations in each town i don't I think there is a concern, I think I heard it from Karen, that other towns kind of uh, want to say, can you serve us too? And I and I, that becomes a um, sort of a issue of dilution. You know, you have committed partners in the community here, and I suppose on a very limited basis to help them get started, uh, but I definitely wouldn't start going too far out because it's really, it, it, it let's 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 worry about Hyde Park first or whatever maybe it does end up being a countywide thing in the end but um I think Hyde Park likes hel helping Hyde Park and that that adds a lot of energy to people when you start branching out it it, it could be self-destructive yeah yep. agreed so yes, long-term thing. So let's let's keep that on the I'll, I'll try to send out to everybody what we had talked about with that neighborhood issue that the select board had a few months ago and then you can see where that where that ended up yeah yeah okay and uh if any of you are interested in any of that um fema training like incident command system if you're um sitting at home and and have uh and are getting bored i can uh, provide you with links uh that's all free training um you know there there are lots of uh you know, two, three, four hour classes, um, and, and I can provide you with that information. But yes, formalizing any of this would certainly be best done after this is uh, yeah. all over with. Uh, but before um, people's volunteerism um, starts to to, uh, to wane a little bit. Right. Uh, that's all I have. I don't know if uh, any of you have anything else. Um. 
This is Melanie. I know that we were talking about um, like maybe needing to do the direct mailing, and we're pretty new at all of this, and we've been trying to use like the front porch forum and um, the News and Citizen, and then um, you know just got lucky and brought flyers around to some of the key stores managers so that they could um, network people that were contacting them. And then also the Sterling View folks, um, they put it up there. So didn't know if you had recommendations for like next steps or if you feel, um, since we're pretty new at this, like if you feel that a direct mailing isn't a necessary thing or is it not yet or what what do you all think of that? Um, from Like I said, from past experience, it will be duplicative for many people. We have a huge, uh, a bunch of folks already registered with Front Porch Forum which I don't know if that gets to 50, 60% of the town, but we've had really good luck in getting that. So whether that that alone is enough, I found out it wasn't and it hasn't been for notice issues. So we've gone, the two alternate paths we've taken is to, is to target distribution information, sort of like what you did with Sterling View, uh, or if we have a, a planning project, we, we're just doing what in North Hyde Park, uh, go door to door in a select area, but there's certainly people that will miss, even if they're tied into Front Porch Forum, notices of your services. So probably the best avenue is is twofold, I would think. So in your Front Porch Forum notices, which get out to a really high percentage of people, ask within that notice, ask those people to share your information. So it's almost like a doubling up effort yep. so that if if they get a notice and they're asked to share spare share the word word you could probably get it to everybody in a couple front porch forum notices the okay. backup or the more traditional one is the every door which will go in everybody's box and 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 that's not 100 percent successful but at least you can say we did all we could do so that's that's when you would do the mailing to every every door because not everybody gets the newspaper, not everybody gets the front porch, not everybody talks to a lot of other people during the day. Yeah. Um, but some most most people are pretty good about getting their mail, at least looking through it quickly, especially with something that says Hyde Park on it, obviously. Yep. So we could um, get to that, I don't know the timing of it, you know, as far as how we get that going, but that's that's an option. I would I would probably stick with the front porch form and word of mouth for a little bit and then with then we can visit the, the mass mailing that probably yeah. the town could do so okay sounds great so we could see if this got some traction over the next week and it sounds like y'all do these calls every week so if in a week or so we feel like there's still a need but maybe people don't know about it we could yeah. revisit it because yeah we have that's good post. yeah great perfect all right well thank you everybody um and uh, welcome to this, and uh, we'll chat uh, next week or or uh, before, if need be.